Sitting in the shade of the leafy trees on the University of Juba campus is a group of students sheltering from the heat and chatting about their classes. Francis John is studying finance and accountancy. He knows about the newly signed peace agreement, but it is not occupying his thoughts. He's seen it all before. South Sudan has been in conflict for several years, 21 years. They did not enjoy this peace. How are they going to enjoy this peace? Through the peace agreement. If they can able to come together, uh, those of oppositions, those in government, and all, to, uh, and, and all the citizens, let them come together and then fight for the development of this country. But without all these people come together and then avoiding the, their own interests, uh, let them think of the other people's interests so that they will achieve this peace. But without all those things, it's very hard. Just a few metres away, a panel of experts is debating the right to peace. The discussion is a forerunner to the International Day of Peace, which comes as South Sudanese chart a way forward in implementing the new peace deal. I think it's up to the people of South Sudan to own this agreement. As bad as it might be, as crooked as it is, let's look for ways that we can straighten those flaws and the crooked lines that are, that are mapping out the agreement itself. I do believe and I do trust that we have the ability to do that. The only thing that's left is how then do we come together and actually have that common agenda pushing forward. The government acknowledges that most of the population has been born into war. They have never known peace, but now is the time to embrace it. This peace must be championed by South Sudanese. And to begin this peace, we must begin it with a smile. A smile at the face of each other. We must also begin it with forgiveness, regardless of how much you have been offended, you have to forgive and forget. And then a new chapter will open for us. This is a very important thing. We say and we denounce violence, we denounce bloodshed, and we advocate for peace and for tranquility and for love and for unity. The United Nations mission in South Sudan is ready to support genuine peace building and reconciliation activities using its resources across the country. There's been some scepticism about whether there is a political will to implement the agreement. The reaction from people I've met is one of hope but also one of caution. And like, like us, they want to see concrete action on the ground to demonstrate the real commitment to peace. We all know the peace agreement is not perfect. No peace agreement ever devised has ever been perfect. But it is the one on the table, it's the one that it exists, and for that reason, we all need to back it, and that's why the UN will back it. So that it becomes genuinely inclusive and can deliver for the dreams and the hopes of the people of South Sudan. There are concerns that despite the commitment to disengage all armed forces, clashes continue in the central Equatorius. The government says there has been a reduction in the level of violence and people must be patient. And of course, peace, since it is a process, a reduction of violence is also a process. It is not an event. But what I would like to assure you, that peace has come and it will be a lasting peace. For the young people in the audience, this message is reassuring, but the opportunity to realize their hopes and dreams rests on the willingness of others to end the war, trust each other, and implement a peace deal that will last.